Are you ready to be the best that you can be? Join hybrid business coach and consultant Charity Brown and her guest as they give you behind the scenes access to the insider tips and tricks that will help you take your business to the next level. Charity has an extraordinary approach to boosting businesses to break out of their modes, influence their industries, and become leaders of their packs. And she's ready to pass this inspiring knowledge on to you today. Learn how to change your game and build your business into what you've always dreamed of, right here on the Create Clarity with Charity podcast. Hello and welcome to Create Clarity with Charity. Today I have an amazing guest, Alex Trekov. Hi, Alex. Hey, how's it going? I hope I did you justice on that. Oh, it's um, those, you know, complicated Russian last <laughs> names are tricky ones. <laughs> yep. I don't blame people for mispronouncing my name. Okay. Well, um, Alex is the CEO of Elite Closers Club, and he has an amazing offer today and some amazing insight, and his story is just really notable. Um, Alex, tell us about you. How's it going? <laughs> well, uh, I'm a... I guess I'm a serial entrepreneur by birth. <laughs> okay. So I, I've been kind of a business business owner either at heart in the beginning and then about 20, not 20 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. No, probably 50, tw- close to 20 years ago. Now I switched to kind of like majority of my income coming from businesses. And um, I've been kind of at it ever since. Nice. So you kind of have that entrepreneurial drive from birth. And I know that you were really inspired when you were in the USSR before you guys immigrated here, you you and your mom and your, your family. Um, when were you like 14? Yeah. Yeah. We came, we came to Canada when I was 14. Um, I don't know math, what the exact, we came in 91. So, so yeah, 14, let's say. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, like live in USSR was a little, little difficult, back at those last years right and uh, you know there was a lot of struggle and I guess um, one of the reasons why I call myself an entrepreneur from birth is because I kind of saw my mom uh, really like she was in a civil engineer by profession and she actually ended up being having her own business as a seamstress and earning more money as a business owner even though she was working very hard but she was able to give us a pretty decent life right yeah and that whole idea, like, I don't know, people from Eastern Bloc kind of understand what I'm saying when I say that, but um, there is kind of this drive that you develop from desperation, right? So when, when you are born through difficult circumstances, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's a survival thing. It's kind of like nothing will stop you until you get results type thing, right? Yeah, like the fire yeah. burning really fast on your fanny and that fire inside to just achieve and go that very yeah. disciplined and no one's going to stop me. Kind it, of it, is a, it is a little different because it com- my comes from, from like survival, right? Like I was forced to do that. Like I didn't have a choice, right? Uh, but it's so ingrained in me that I, I, I don't know. I, do or I think- die, right? Yeah, I, I, I kind of just have to do it. So, so business is all about failure, right? Like as business owners, we fail repeatedly over and over again in various ways. And if you don't have that attitude of, you know, I will overcome anything, really, the obstacles don't matter. Um, you're not going to survive as a business owner, really, not for good. Yeah, I mean, you got to come in knuckle busting, man. So you got to really throw down to win in business. So people think the American dream is just like, you know, all this money and, you know, just high fee, easy life. And, you know, the U S pay your bills and pay food and go get you a mansion and a Ferrari. I mean, everyone's doing, that. <laughs> you know, you know um, like when I first came, th- this is funny. I, I don't really think about this stuff too often, but uh, we literally came with like 60 bucks in our pocket. Like we, when we first came to Canada, we had literally enough money. Cause we kind of, Put all the we, we lived in Sweden uh, kind of we tried immigrating to Sweden first and then they kicked us out so we had to buy a, a fake passport and like cross borders illegally oh, wow uh, when we got to Canada we literally had 60 bucks and two suitcases mm-hmm. enough for like one night in a motel and then we we were lucky enough to go and 
you know, get on government assistance programs so that we can survive, really. Yeah. So, so well, there, the opportunity was there. You guys made it through all the hoops yeah. to jump over to get, you know, out of the USSR. The Soviet Union back then was no cakewalk. So, no. you know, no, your mom was... wanted the best for you guys, right? And have you have more opportunity, not stuck in all that. And you guys got here and you had to, you know, hustle, right? Exactly. That's all about you're getting your hustle and just. Yeah. So tell me about when you started, like, I guess you were 14, right? Or 16, you got your first dishwashing job and you're helping yeah. mom pay the bills. Yeah. And- well, what happened was it's actually an interesting story because, you know, you would think that government assistance programs are so great, right? That, you know, you, you're sitting on welfare and you're collecting the checks. Mm-hmm. Well, unfortunately, the welfare paid like $500 a month. Like, I think our total between me and my mom was $750 a month. Mm-hmm. Like and that's for rent, us, food, everything. Everything. That's not yeah. even enough for rent because, no, sorry, maybe rent at that time was about 700 bucks. But then, you know, how do you eat, right? Yeah. So I actually got a cash job in a Chinese buffet restaurant, Buffet Mandarin <laughs> in Montreal. And I was a dishwasher for $5 an hour <laughs> for two and a half years. Yeah, it was... Uh, you know, hard knocks. This is the hard knocks, right? There was yeah, not like 160 hours a week, busting your ass, right? Trying to make enough money. Were you in art school by then, or were you? Yeah, so I like the first thing that I've done is I tried to get to school, right? Because obviously, you know, nobody wants to be a dishwasher for the rest of their life. So when I did make it to school, uh, I ended up going to high school first, then kind of got my equivalency so that I was able to study, and then we went to college. And that was, you know, I went to art school at first. Yeah. And like I counted how many hours I worked uh, while I was in school. It was like 160 hours a week. It's, it was insane. I have no idea how I was, uh, I was alive at the end. Yeah. So, I mean, just that push and that force and that drive, you know, that fire burning, you know, hot, you, you ran into like, a brick wall, right? You just, your body just kind of just said enough and you kind of snapped, right? Like it just yeah. had too much pressure, too much, 160 hours a week. I mean, that's like a month in one week, you know? Yeah, so. Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. When I graduated, so when I graduated from school and this is, this is kind of like series of unfortunate events in my life, yeah. uh, but I actually, you know, you know what, with all the difficulty, I don't regret any of it at all. I think it, it made me a stronger person at the end, but just, just as a story. Yeah. I ended up, I ended up getting right out of school, a job with Ubisoft, which is a pretty big uh, video game design company. It was literally the best job, you know, out of a whole class. It was like an idealistic situation. Mm-hmm. And that first week I ended up burning out. So, so like that 160, 160 hours, Per, per week accumulated. Yeah. I burned out to the point where I had to quit my job, that good job that I got. Right. Yeah. And I ended up delivering chicken for two years, trying to get my mental health in order because I literally couldn't work. Like my mind was, I, I would get anxiety attacks. Right. So my body collapsed literally. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's where, you know, this, my, my, my podcast is, is a lot about human development and the evolutionary entrepreneur that, you know, works with coaches and knows the value of consultants and programs and things that kind of help shift and transform people's mindsets that literally can take them to like the next level in life. Right. So yeah. in, at that time, when you had that, that break, you were kind of were, you know, talking to a professional and got a cool tool that it later turned into this amazing helped you with your neuro linguistic programming for all your teaching. Right. So that Absolutely. very valley low, that pain point really actually catapulted you into like your next phase. You got it. Yeah. It was the beginning. It's, it's such a, it's such a weird thing, how small things influence your life so dramatically. So what happened was that I did get that burnout and uh, you know, I would get anxiety attacks and I've never had anxiety attack in my life. I was a pretty easygoing guy, you know, n- mental health issues were not, I never was depressed, nothing. It was just not in the forefront, uh, mm-hmm. but I, I was experiencing that those, they were real. And I ended up going to a psychologist and, you know, unfortunately, psychologists, they like to drag things on. And, you know, they were trying to get to the root of my problem and talking about my childhood. And it was like, I'm like, you know what, I'm feeling this, this uh, symptoms now, like I'm getting anxiety attacks now, what can I do now? 
not, yeah. not like, like the physical part, not the mental part. Yeah. Like the body not, responding. Let's not, and... sit, let's not sit here and analyze my childhood for 20 years. I need help now. Yeah. She goes, you know what? Uh, I'm going to give you like, like one small exercise. It was very simple. It was literally, you know, whenever you get a, uh, like a, an anxiety attack, just try to imagine like a positive memory. You need to prepare that memory in advance and try to imagine start thinking of that memory as soon as you start feeling the symptoms of an anxiety attack coming on. Yeah. And I started using it and it was like magic. Oh, I nice. literally was like, you know, within two weeks, I snapped out of this uh, kind of like getting anxiety attack for every two minutes. Right. Because what started happening is that I would do that kind of like refocusing my mind exercise. meditation. Yeah. It's like a meditation technique, like a meditation technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, the next anxiety attack would come in 15 minutes and not in five minutes. Mm -hmm. And then it started coming once an hour and maybe once every four hours. Right. And it started going away and it did go away within two weeks. Yeah. Uh, and it kind of led me to think that there must be other things you can do with your mind than, than simple psychology, right. Than simple kind of like, you know, what traditional psychology is, right. Like the, you know, talking about your experience and, finding out yeah, recreating your beliefs and reprogramming your brain. What about the body, like breathing in and focusing on light or the beach, like you're doing like a positive energy going through your body and working on that instead of just like really diving into maybe what might trigger it, you know, like you got it. anxiety, fear. Um, you got it. Cause you know. everything is like psychology is very based on root causes. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like, you know, how can we change the root cause? How can we look differently at the root cause, but they don't really give you a lot of tools in terms of there's like CBT, of course. Um, so I ended up at the end of the day, discovering new linguistic programming. Right. And it was a person that worked for me. He was a master practitioner and he started teaching me about it. I've heard of it before, like Tony Robbins, for example, pretty much all of his stuff is based on neuro linguistic programming. Yeah. And he adapted it for various other things like marketing, like, you know, interpersonal relationships, whatever, whatever else, these interventions that he does, it's mm -hmm. all based on neuro linguistic programming at the end of the day. Yeah. And I've learned that neurolinguistic programming is just an art of communication. It's they took the best of uh, psychology and communication, put it all together into frameworks that you can use literally right away to fix things that don't serve you in your life. Yeah. Right? And to me, it was like my mind was blown because it was literally something that I could use. It's a tangible thing and I can influence how I speak to people, how I come across to people, how I communicate. And because um, at the end of the day, what happened with me is that, you know, I, I was an illustrator. At the end of the day, I came back to illustration. I was working as an illustrator, professional illustrator and designer for eight years. I absolutely hated it. It was the worst thing that I ever experienced because um, as a commercial artist, you become a very good technician, right? Because they tell you how to do everything. So the creative aspect leaves that job completely. Yeah, you're stuck in the framework now. You can't even express your creativity. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. And then, uh, you know, I ended up moving to a different province at some point. So I moved from Quebec to Alberta and there was no illustration jobs here. So I actually, you know, started looking for any jobs because I needed to make money and I came across sales and I've done sales my whole career because I was always freelancing. Right. And I was always exposed to sales, but not full time. Uh -huh. And right when I moved and right, right when I get that, got that job, it was my first sales job ever was selling timeshare. So the sleaziest, if you think about sleaziest uh, sales job possible, uh -huh. that was me. I was doing <laughs> presentations and I was closing people at the table after the presentation. Uh -huh. And it was like magic. I loved it. I, I became obsessed with sales because I love people and I love talking to people. And I love the whole idea of you end up talking to different people all the time and you need to get them to like you. How do you do it? Well, there is yeah. specific techniques. I happen to have natural ability to do that. I never, I was never... I never took specific sales training. I just kind of picked up, just comes naturally to me, right? Yeah. But then when I started deconstructing it, it turns out that I'm using a lot of NLP techniques naturally. Uh -huh. It was just, it just so happens. And if you, if there is a technique behind it, you can teach it. 
And that's actually how I, end I ended up developing the sales training because uh, I started deconstructing how I do things. And it turns out that it perfectly matches with my NLP knowledge. And boom, now we have some sort of framework that becomes really interesting, right? Because it's yeah. not just a sales framework. It's a framework of how you use communication from the psychology point of view and how to do it better so, to, so that people can understand you better, get mm -hmm. a better experience. and Well, better. and you understand yourself better after doing the programs because now you have these techniques like the visioning, like, okay, where are you right now? Where do you want to be? What does that look like? How are you going to attain it? And then like Tony Robbins, you breathe and you get the breath of fire. You have the visioning and you have this framework. Okay, and then you like really embody it. Then you take action and then you follow through and then you have, boom, your, your brand new whatever you're working on, right? Or your sale, right? Because you could do sales that way. Find out Absolutely. what their current position is, what their pain point, how we can solve the problem, how you can get them there, how you can close them. And why do people do things that they do in the first place? Because there's a psychological reason why people do things, right? Why yeah. they buy from you? Why they want to talk to you? Why don't they want to talk to you, right? It's, yeah, it's all subconscious. It's all, there's always <laughs> reasons for it. And if you just meet their expectations, if you meet them halfway, then you end up winning. Yes. And that's, that's what you've been doing. So I want to start, I, I love your story. I totally, I mean, thank you for like, you know, letting us all in and, you know, to see where, I mean, all this was very organically created by you. So it's a, it's a pretty amazing system. And um, I'm really into the e-learning, you know, and so I really value good quality content. And I know you come from like a good school of business, you know, with Sam and everything. So I'm like, this there is resonating go. a lot. I really there like it. Go. So I hope all the audience out there is uh, really understanding what the Elite Closers Club, he's going to fill us in on it. But now you know the foundation of who created it. So you can kind of see where the foundation came from, which is, you know, it's not just like a shot in the dark. It's really based on some very, really solid um premises and foundations, right? So let's talk about that. So let's talk about EliteClosers.club. Sure. Uh, well, this training, like I said, came to be as a result, like I actually discovered that I really love teaching. Like it, it's the strangest thing because uh, I've never thought that teaching would be something that I enjoy, but I truly do enjoy that. I, I ended up having to coach many, many salespeople in my businesses, right? So I don't own just this business. I own other businesses as well. We own like a, a marketing agency, Lynx Digital, where we do YouTube ads, uh, not an advertising agency. Um, so, but this training, uh, the, the whole idea of training uh, kind of came naturally as a result of me needing to train my own employees. And then I had to put frameworks together so that they understand what I'm talking about, right? Like it, it had to be in some sort of a format that people can understand. And it started accumulating little by little, little by little. And it became this elite, clo elite closers club. And if you can scroll all the way on the top, right? Uh, this is kind of what it's all right. about. This art of selling without selling. Yeah. So I absolutely hate scripts in the sense of, you know, you literally just say things that somebody else wrote. I believe in skill development, right? Yeah. So, so it's not about knowing the script. It's, it's more about knowing the skills that you need in order to get to the sale at the end of the day, right? Yeah. And then you can, because you know framework, you know, you know what, what to say after what part, you end up selling naturally, right? So if the customer goes left, you go left with them. If the customer goes right, you go right with them, mm -hmm. right? And it's, it becomes not a scripted pro, uh, process. It becomes skill-based process. Yeah. And that's, like, I mean, it's a tool, literally, like one of the sharpest ones. Sales is like that and finance, money, marketing, like you, those are all tools and you got to have the right. framework, the set, the knowledge and how right. to execute them, right? Any business. I, so I've had several businesses up to this point. I owned a, owned a health clinic with my ex. Uh, and I had a couple of marketing agencies, a couple of advertising agencies, uh, and now these training companies. And what I learned for sure is that you know, primary as a business owner, you cannot outsource sales. 
You will outsource sales after you know how to sell your offer. But at first, you absolutely, absolutely need to learn how to sell your own product yourself, talk to your own client. And then once you got it to the point where you worked out all the kinks in your offer and your pricing, you understand the process A to Z, then you need to teach that process to somebody else. You can't just hire sales out and expect phenomenal results because uh, you know th there is few things that truly make a difference as a you know, for you as a business owner. You need to have control over your finances. So again, that's something you cannot outsource. You need to understand bookkeeping. You need to understand how everything is done. You need to APIs be APIs and cash flow and you got it. credit. You got it. Yeah. Because nobody will care about your money as much as you do. There's no accountant in the world that will care about your money as much as you do. Yeah. And, then, and so, but I mean, back on your sales thing, though, it's like, I, you just blew my mind today, actually, when I went to this, the framework you're talking about that you were just talking about, and yeah. creating that framework and that structure, the training that you did on that was so amazing in that webinar. And I just want to make sure that the audience out there really knows, just if you're listening to what he had just talked about with the sales closing and having the framework, he's really actually made it amazing program. Um, so, right? So so a lot of a lot of my students were asking me uh, for help with prospecting, right? Yeah. Because prospecting is part of sales, but it's different than sales because it's it, there's part of part marketing in it. So I actually made this training that I would like to offer for free to all the listeners of this podcast, uh, just as incentive. This you know you went through it. You tell me, is there a lot of sales in there? Is there a lot of bullshit? As as I no, it? it's not like fluff and you know unicorns and and magic carpet rides it's just like straight bare bones to the point this is the process to get more leads this is the process to optimize other ways to get leads if you're not doing it just organically and you go through the framework of the facebook and you go through the framework of you know the retargeting and really have done such a nice job of click and show and um, walk through every step. And, and it was really impressive. You know, I, I, I think it was like an hour and 30 minutes and I got like four pages of notes. And then like, I had another webinar, like for two hours after that. And I had like half a page. So the stuff that you were talking about is so key to the sales process, right? Cause you need to know this first, you need to know who your customer is. You need to dial into your target market. You need to know, you know, the key things that you're talking about, the structures, the frameworks that it takes to acquire that customer and then how to close them effectively or get them on a call with you so you can do the sales, right? Got it. That's exactly right. So, so this is all about that first step, getting initial contact with the client. Uh, it's based on literally both free, completely free, your own sweat equity, just effort techniques, as well as a little bit paid if you have the money for the paid. You don't need to, paid will give you, will augment your results, but it's not necessary. Yeah, but he's talking $120 a month. I don't think I ever thought yeah. I could be that cheap on Facebook, but yeah. $120, that's like, what do you say? It was like $10 a, a, a week for 10 ads or something for a month. Yeah, it's not you can you can customize it to whatever budget you want really yeah. like all, all it does is you're using remarketing techniques in an interesting way in order for you to augment what you're doing because at the end of the day what you want is you want to create connection with your customers right that's yeah. what you want with with your potential leads because they don't know you like for example you guys don't know me you've never heard of me probably before because i'm not i'm not a guru i'm just a real guy who has businesses right and now i'm teaching what i know right? But in order for us to do business together, you first need to learn about me, right? That's why I'm introducing you to this free webinar. It's pure value. There's no sales, right? Yeah. If you want to continue working with me, great. There's other, other ways we can work together, right? If you like this, we can continue working together. If not, you will take away this, this valuable information and hopefully will change your business, right? So you need to do the same. I, I practice what I preach, that's what exactly what I'm doing. That's what this system is based on. It's based on creating value first before you ask even to be contacted by somebody. Yeah, like you really already need to know them by the time they're reaching out to you and responding. You've already done the research and knowing who your prospects are. You just have to go out and get them or attract them with your videos and you got you it. Know, get them into your process of your acquisition and then close them because that all that those 14 touches, those 14 steps 
yep. or apps or programs or automation things that you have to set up to get them on that call with you to close them. That is the most important because there you have to build all that trust, right? You yeah. have to build all that relationship with them and understanding how they they can research you, they can find you on your Instagram. You know, you have you have your elite closers club on Insta, you got your elite closers club on Facebook. You're building your reputation, and so like having ads in those places, and that's that's a lot what you what you go over in the, yeah. the second part of that training, which is really cool. Um, for all you do it yourself or chief everything officers out there that want to manage your own ad campaigns, he does give an, a really awesome ad campaign in there. Um, I've been doing my own ads for, you know, seven, eight years. So I've been using Facebook a long time, but the campaign structure that you had on there, the format was really, really helpful and impressive with video one, two, three, process, add, offer, you know, connect there we go. and that, that really to know that there's, it should be three ads and three retargets within the campaign. And you go into all the detail, which is like insanely helpful. So I recommend all you guys out there listening who, who want to get more clients on demand and with predictability, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> <laughs> and some amazing sales tips. Right. So, um, yeah, that's, let's talk more about the business and um, what else that you have going on that you, you might want to let the audience know and maybe some words of advice from like, you know, maybe like what, what you tell yourself 20, 30 years ago when you first started your first business or maybe something you wish you knew like 10 years ago. You know, uh, we, we chatted before and I, honestly, I, I am very satisfied like i wouldn't want to change myself too early right you know it, it's good it's like everybody is looking for shortcuts right so so uh, everybody wants this magic pill that if you swallow it you're going to be ahead of everything but there's a reason why you go through the experiences that you go through right and for example my story is full of struggle right there's a lot of difficulties right and you know um I, I overcame a lot, but at the same time, I truly believe that the only reason where I am right now is because I did. If I had some sort of a shortcut, I wouldn't have been the same person, right? It would have taken me to a different path. So I truly believe that you really need to take the time to go with the flow and learn from the best, right? So, so that's, I, I always think I don't like gurus. Uh, you know, I don't have like, idols that I follow, like one person, you know, I want to be that person. As a matter of fact, that I'm very anti kind of like groupy, right? Mm -hmm. I, I like to make my own way. And, but yeah. I'd like to also learn from everybody, literally everybody. If I, if I can learn from you, I will take what you're telling me if it serves me and I will adapt to what I'm doing. Right. Yeah. And if I can learn from Sao Owens, I will absolutely learn from him. I don't yeah. agree with everything he says, but I, I agree with a lot of things, right? And I would take anything he can teach me, right? Mm -hmm. And from Tony Robbins and from endless other people. So um, yeah. I really like that idea of never ending learning, right? And, and just yeah. continuing to, you know, look for advantage in the present moment. That's, that's the advantage. Forget yeah. about going back in, you know, in the past and changing your life. Just right now, change your life right now. Yeah. So I remember when we were talking, it was that can I, C A N I, constant and never ending improvement. You know, and investing in yourself and your courses yeah. and invest in your business and knowledge and gain it from other people. Like what we're doing, we're producing things for value insight and to, you know, help the collective. So um, you've done like a really amazing job, by the way. And um, I'm just, I, I really want all the listeners out there to, to remember to go check out eliteclosers.club, right? Yes. Not .com, .club. Club. Yes. It's one of them fancy new domains. Yeah. So, and look <laughs> them up on Insta. Hey, Alex, you're an awesome guest. I love what you're doing. You just have so much value inside. It's crazy. So maybe we can get on a mastermind and you know, make some, make some, change some lives and sure, the sure. toolbox they always dreamed of. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. If I, if I can help anybody, absolutely. I'm here. 
Awesome. Well, everyone out there have an amazing day. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thanks for having me.